All right, everybody. So I've been talking about uh, various aspects of the uh, Straw Bell House build for a while now, but I don't think I've taken the time, one, to actually uh, kind of lay out some of these details in a, in a nice design and uh, share that with all of you. So let's try and do that today, at least up to a point where, in this case, uh, it'll be up to kind of the, the roof assembly, just before the roof assembly. So I'll get us up to the, kind of the top of our walls here. But uh, let's use SketchUp to dive in and take a look at some of the details of the layout and the design. Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, here we are at the sill plate, which is the beginning. Um, you may have heard me talk about this before because it is the one part of this that's actually done right now. But uh, what you're looking at is a 15 inch wide, which happens to be the width of a bale, um, ladder structure with two by fours kind of laid on their edges. Let me maneuver it here a little bit. Okay, so here we are in SketchUp. Um, it happens to be sitting on top of two courses of rammed earth tires and it is secured to those tires with rebar that is bent under the bottom row of tires and after it comes up through the ground it bends over basically each one of these little rungs in that ladder structure that I've notched out and bent that rebar over to kind of pin it onto those tires. So each of these cross members these are in their actual positions as they really are out on the ground and those positions were determined uh, pretty much by where the rebar stuck up between each of the tires. Um, these cavities will be filled with pea gravel, uh, the space in here, which is three and a half inches deep because this is a two by four. So that cavity will be filled with pea gravel and that is for a uh, capillary break to keep the bales from getting any moisture from the ground. So the, uh, the dimensions of this, I was going for uh, a 24, a 30 wide, I should say 30 wide by 24 deep. Um, and just because of the way I laid the tires out, I got slightly bigger. I got about a foot bigger in each direction. So we're a little over 31 feet wide and 25 feet uh, deep, which gives us a square footage of about 775. Um, the outer dimensions are about 33 feet 7 across and 27 and a half feet deep. And because I grew that a little bit from my original plan here, we're going to walk through some of the rooms that I've laid out. I laid those rooms out when I was shooting for a, a 24 by 30. So the room dimensions could change just slightly, you know, maybe six inches to a foot in any direction, depending on how we want to work it. But, but that's our, our layout to begin with. Okay, so let's drop these rooms in here and see what we're dealing with. Uh, again, these are all uh, slightly negotiable within our outer shell. But uh, they're currently kind of minimally sized to accommodate each room's, you know, needed functionality and, and potentially furniture. Um, so let's go clockwise starting from the northwest corner at the bathroom. So there's the bathroom there. Um, you see it's got a nice thick adobe wall. And it's currently just sized pretty much big enough for a shower, um, a toilet, and a vanity. So that's that. Then heading across to the, uh, let's see, at the northeast corner, we've got the kitchen. And that is essentially, you know, kind of an L counter space, uh, kind of big enough to handle a sink, a stove, and a refrigerator. Um, there's a probable, the, the big box is the refrigerator here, there's a probable pantry kind of added to this somewhere, either near the refrigerator over here or over on the other side at the end of this countertop here. So. I'm not sure where I'm going to put that yet, but I think I'm going to try and squeeze that in. And potentially a dishwasher. So I'm still kind of on the fence about that one, but I'm thinking I might like to add a dishwasher. And there's a big table, kind of, it's a bar table that we currently have that we'll use as kind of a, uh, both a, our, a table and sort of an island and to kind of separate the, the living space from the, uh, uh, the, the kitchen space from the living room space because they're pretty much open between the two. So continuing around to the uh, southwest, I'm sorry, the southeast corner would be the living room. So there's the living room, not much to look at there. Again, just an open space. Um, it's pretty much just big enough size right now for a couch, coffee table, and you know, a, a 
TV in the corner. Um, and then continuing around to the southwest corner is the bedroom. Again, nice thick adobe wall, and we're hoping that, that adobe, those adobe walls on the, on the bathroom and the bedroom are, will both serve as some thermal mass to help with some, uh, with some passive solar and also for soundproofing. So, and right now the bedroom is sized pretty much just big enough for a queen bed, uh, dresser, and two kind of bedside uh, wardrobes. And then that leaves kind of a little bit of an entryway, nothing major, but um, kind of an entryway in the front and the back that we'll talk about in a minute when we get to the doors and windows. But uh, also kind of a hallway between that uh, bathroom and bedroom space, which will most likely just be lined with storage, either shelving or cabinets or something like that. So that covers kind of the layout of the rooms, at least as we see it today. So like I said, all sort of somewhat negotiable in the future within our outer shell, but, uh, but that's kind of the way we see it laying out. Okay, so now that we've seen how the rooms lay out, hopefully the windows and doors will make sense now. So let's take a look at the window and door bucks. Let's just add both of those in here. And uh, so some notes in general on the window and door bucks. They're all pretty much just, um, because of the width of the sill plate here, so they're all going to have some kind of uh, common characteristics, right? So the the kind of the um, they're all going to be pretty much traditional framing on kind of the outer edge of the wall, um, the outer edge of that sill plate. And by traditional framing, I mean you know two by four, uh, king studs, jack studs, cripple studs, a sill for windows, and uh, and a a header sized appropriately. So that header could either be kind of a double two by six or a two by eight or a two by 10, depending on the span of either the window or the door. Um, then to accommodate kind of the width of the sill, also meaning the width of the bales essentially, um, they're all gonna have sort of these, these uh, additional king studs on kind of the inner edge of that, of that thick wall, right? That bale wall and those will connect to the outer edge framing with kind of these cross members, these little two by four cross members to create kind of a box structure for every window and door. Um, and we will leave the, the interior, if you look at the windows, let me find one here that I can kind of zoom in on. Um, although we frame out kind of that outer edge as sort of traditional, traditional window framing, right? The inner edge, on the, on the sill uh, or on the inner edge of the bale wall, we've left for now kind of unfinished or unframed in a sense, right? We, we just put these king studs in place and connected them with these cross members to give us sort of this box structure that'll give us some support and, and we've got a place for our window or door to sit, right? But on the inside, we're gonna leave kind of some of the decisions of how to finish framing that out um, for the future, whether, whether maybe this is a back from this window sill, it could be either a flat sort of for maybe like a bench seat It could just come straight back into the room. Um, it could slope a little bit maybe in the case of, you know, on the bottom of a window, it could slope down to allow more sunlight to come into the room and hit the floor. Um, so that's just a decision. I think by doing it this way, it, it lets us make that decision a little later. So that's kind of some, some notes on and one more thing about all the window and door bucks, they're, they're all starting at, at eight feet tall, which is about how high the bales are gonna stack originally, but then after we compress the bales, they'll come down a little bit. So once we've done a compression test on the bales and we know what that number's gonna be, uh, we will kind of chop the tops of all of this, of this all of the buck structures. Um, so the king studs uh, will be chopped down, you know, a few inches to accommodate kind of the, the compression of the bales. So that, that applies to kind of all of the windows. So let's run around the, the whole perimeter here, kind of from, again, clockwise starting at the northwest corner in the bathroom here. Um, there's a kind of a high, uh, wide, but short uh, window, kind of up high, really just for ventilation, really. It's a three foot wide by one foot tall slider window. It's got a, it's got a two by six header, um, or a double two by six header. Uh, then next to that, We've got kind of our main front door. It's a standard three foot wide by uh, six foot eight tall opening. 
again a 2x6 header, double 2x6 header. And then we've got our kitchen windows, which are both the same, but one on the north wall and one on the east wall. They are both, again, a little high up above the countertops, but um, four feet wide by two feet tall. Again, these are all these are all intended to be sliders, side sliders. Um, so that's both the kitchen windows. Again, up to four feet here wide, we've still got a two by six, a double two by six header. Then we're going to get into some bigger windows as we move around to the living room, the east wall of the living room. This is our biggest window because this points out at our best view. Um, this is a six foot wide by four foot tall window. It's got a big header of uh, double two by tens. So, and then as we continue around to the south side, uh, we've got a five foot wide, it's still in the living room on the south side, we've got a five foot wide by four foot tall window with, now this being five foot wide, this is a, a double two by eight header on this one. And actually I'll skip over the, this other door because the, the window in the bedroom is exactly the same as that one out in the living room, five foot wide, four foot tall, uh, double two by eight header. And then finally, between those two is a uh, six foot wide French door, French patio door, um, and it has a big two by double two by ten header. And uh, finally, there is kind of because every wall, so we went around the walls there, everything but the west, this is the west side over here if I swing around. Every wall, other than the west, has kind of a, a window or door on it. Um, but the west wall has nothing. That's on purpose because that's on purpose because for one, there isn't much to see on that side for us. There's really not much of a view over there. And number two, we don't want that west, that setting sun, really coming into the house because that'll bake us in the summers. So, so this this west wall is going to be all bales. So because it's going to be all bales, and every other wall had kind of an additional support member of at least one window or door buck, um, I'm going to throw, I think, a dummy uh, buck. Uh, I don't know what else to call it. It's just a real thin kind of one single member of sort of king studs like I would have at the edge of one of the windows or doors over on this wall. And I've thrown it right in the center uh, because in the future we believe that the, or there is going to be a beam that's going to run across the center of the house to allow us to do rafters from one side to the other. So there's going to be a center beam across the house. And because that will land kind of right here in the middle of this wall, halfway across this dimension, I thought it was a good idea to put that additional support right here. So it's kind of a hybrid. I know this is, you know, I've talked about load-bearing straw bale. This is really kind of a, a hybrid. Yes, the bales are supporting the roof but they're also assisted by every window and door. And since there wasn't a window or door on this wall, I just threw in kind of a dummy just to kind of make it more like the other walls. I don't know if that's 100% necessary or not, but it felt like a good idea. So that takes us around uh, for all the window and door bucks all around the perimeter of the house. So let's move on. So now that our bucks are in place, let's take a look at our bales. So here are the bales thrown in. There we go. Um, our bales will be stood on edge, so kind of standing a little taller rather than wider. Um, there are dimensions roughly, you know, not everyone's the same. It's not a perfect block, but uh, they're roughly, in this orientation, they're about 15 inches thick across the wall. That'll make our walls about 15 inches thick. Um, they're about 45 inches long in this dimension, and standing like this, they're about two feet tall. So at four courses of bales should get us about eight feet, as I said before, but we're going we're gonna to compress them. So we'll do kind of a pre-compression um, uh, before, we, before we go on to the next step, which would be the, the box beam um, and the roof structure. Um, we'll do a pre-compression, and we expect to get um, using, we'll do that pre-compression using uh, kind of a poly strapping and a ratchet mechanism to kind of squeeze those down um, Actually, I should say with the with the box beam on top of it, but I'll show that in a second. So we'll squeeze those down, and we're expecting to get. I'm going to uh, perform a test, but we're expecting to get about an inch compression per bale for a total of about four inches. So instead of those walls being about eight feet tall, they should probably be about seven foot eight. And as I said, we'll modify the the bucks, each of the bucks, to kind of match that, so that when the wall does, when the when the whole 
assembly squeezes down that box beam as the, and I'll show the box beam in a second, but as that box beam comes down with the bales on top of the bales, it should rest when we squeeze it down all the way that we want to, it should rest on top of all these, each of these bucks around the whole perimeter here. So, uh, we've, so when it comes to the bales, um, obviously we're filling in, you know, between bucks and we're, we want to have nice full bales at the corner. So basically what I did with the buck positioning, the window positioning, window and door positioning, was I tried as best I could to use full kind of bale widths or bale lengths where I could, right? So that from each corner, generally each window is about one bale length from a corner so that I can put a bale there without having to, without having to cut it. Now, obviously when I step up, because I want to have kind of this crisscrossing pattern here, um, I will have to cut some of these, split some of these bales, but I tried to minimize at least to attempt to minimize in the design uh, the bale splitting as much as possible. So you can see, for example, between these two, between this window and door, I've got two full bales in here. So hopefully not a need to split those. Now I will, of course, have to split this because you want kind of this running bond, right, of the, the seams not really lining up. You want them to kind of be staggered. Obviously, I'm going to have to split some bales, but I tried to minimize that as much as I could. So that's, that's kind of how our bales lay out around the structure. Again, filling in the gaps between the, uh, the window and door bucks and trying to be smart about the corners and uh, this west side as I said really no windows or doors there so that's just kind of straight and I will just kind of I may have to I will have to split some bales here as I meet this dummy support that I put in here but that shouldn't be real hard to accommodate there but other than that this wall should be just a big stretch of full bales hopefully but there you go between the windows on the south side and on the, this would be the east side over here. Just stacking between the windows. All nice full bales at the corners to get nice solid structure at the corners. So after that, we want to put the top on all of this stuff, or at least to get ready for the roof that's coming. So let's talk about what goes on top of this next. All right, so now that we've got our bales in place here, let's talk about how we stabilize all this and, and get ready to put a roof on it. So that's where we're gonna look at our box beam. I've kind of touched on this a little bit already, but the box beam, if you remember where we started, is pretty much just a copy or a mirror image of the sill plate that we have down at the bottom. Again, you know, 15 inches wide to kind of accommodate the bales, for the bales to sit on. And then when we get to the top, 15 inches wide, a ladder structure again made of kind of two by four structure kind of a ladder structure um, with cross member supports for for strength and stability um, and this one now is so the sill plate was for the bales to rest on the box beam is to squeeze the bales down so as we're gonna have our strapping material running up 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 these walls kind of under the sill plate down below and over top of the box beam up above and we're gonna ratchet we're gonna kind of squeeze that we're gonna ratchet that down to squeeze it a little bit at a time again hoping to get about four inches probably of compression and squeeze that thing down and just tighten everything up um, so the only difference really between this box beam and the sill plate it's obviously it's the same size it's covering the same area um, but it will have to assist in kind of smashing let's say or squeezing the bales down it will have kind of a sheathing material on the bottom of it which is this this, this plywood kind of the, either plywood or OSB that we're looking at here so also add some rigidity to the whole structure but but uh, but yeah that allows you to kind of squeeze down on those bales so that kind of goes around the whole top of the structure the same way the whole bottom of the structure was a sill plate that looked just like this so it really is just kind of a copy of the sill plate to it's the it's the other half of the sandwich right to squeeze everything together so uh, that's about it for that and that would make us ready for a roof structure that we'll talk about at a later date okay so again that's our layout kind of as we see it today um, again the the inner the inner stuff is is uh, slightly negotiable within the outer frame. What we're focusing on now is kind of the, the, the build that we're focusing on now is this outer shell. Um, this is just the, the inner room 
structure here for now is really just to give you an idea of how we came up with you know positioning for windows and doors and things like that but but it's a little bit negotiable inside in the future right now we're just trying to build this outer shell so I think I've covered it here in kind of the order we're gonna do things again the rooms were just for context but uh, trying to put this together in the order that we're gonna kind of attach uh, uh, attack each of these steps and that'll at least get us to the roof, which again, we'll, we'll talk about in a future video, but that should do it. So uh, hopefully that all makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions on any of that. And thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing or sharing with a friend. And click the bell notification so you never miss any of our videos. We really appreciate every view and comment. And if you're looking for other ways to support us, please check out the links in the description box. See, See you in the, the next, next video! video. <laughs>